So before we get started with this video, leave a comment down below of what your favorite or your must have accessory is for your current MacBook. Whether it is a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, let me know in the comment because I'm always curious to know what you guys have or you can't live without. But in this video, what I wanna do is talk about seven accessories that I use with my MacBook Air that really helps elevate my experience with it and I kinda of use them pretty much day to day. I use them at my desk, some of them are portable and you can use them with any situation that you have with your MacBook. And again, I'm using the M2 MacBook Air, but without further ado, Let's talk about these seven accessories and I'll link them all down below. Let's get into it. So the first accessory is actually one of the relatively new ones that I've been using that I absolutely love and I didn't think I would fully like it because I wasn't a big fan of getting cases for your laptops but this one completely changed the narrative on it for myself personally and this is going to be the Helm by a company called Andar. I use a lot of Andar products on the iPhone side whether it's an iPhone leather case or a full grain leather MagSafe wallet that they just released but their full grain leather Helm product is absolutely amazing and it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a full grain leather cover for your MacBook Air and they make this for the MacBook Pro as early as 2016 and of course they have all the newer ones like the m2 macbook air the m1 macbook air the m series of macbook pros and everything that comes in between those so from 2016 to now they have a helm that'll fit your macbook but this product is more for aesthetic purposes it does kind of help out from a protection standpoint again i wouldn't go out and just drop your macbook pro or macbook air to begin with whether you're in a case or not but it will protect against scuffs and scratches when you throw it in a bag when you're carrying it around it'll keep everything pristine and it's very easy to put on very secure you just put on the bottom plate you put on the top plate and it's exactly what it sounds like and it covers it completely and it covers it extremely well and it does have a couple little clamps on there that are easy to put on, but also it's not too hard to take off. I used to use these plastic cases, I forget what company it was, where you, once you put it on, you were going to leave that thing on, and if you were to take it off, you were never going to put it back on because it was so difficult to take off. This strikes that perfect balance of being easy to put on, but also easy enough to take off, but not so easy that it just falls off on its own in a bag or something like that. So that is by a company called Andar. That is the Helm. I believe it retails for about $130, but again, keep in mind this is full grain genuine leather. It smells absolutely amazing, and it comes in a bunch of different colorways and patina super nicely. The color that I use is stone gray, which is my favorite colorway that they have for all of their products. And they have about 11 other different colors to choose from and you can match them with your iPhone case and your iPad case and everything in between. And now the next one is going to be a laptop stand. Now the one that I have is by a company called Johan and it's very cool because it kind of uses the weight of the MacBook Air itself and leverages that to kind of keep it standing up, but also keep it extremely secure. Like when you look at this piece of wood, it looks like it wouldn't be able to handle much of anything at all, but I've been using it with my MacBook Air for about six months now over here on my desk, but then I also like to use it kind of as a leveler when I am using it away from my desk so I can kind of see everything at eye line level and not have to like crouch over and bend my neck to see the actual MacBook. And what I like about this, this one's specifically is that I thought it wasn't going to fit when I did put on this Andar case, but it still works perfectly fine with this Andar case. And the way that it works is there's a little sliver down there for the bottom portion of where like maybe the trackpad is of your MacBook. You put that on there, then you tilt it up and then it stay that way and it stays very secure and you can move it around very easily without worrying about the MacBook kind of popping off. So that stand is by Johan, but you can get any other stand if you want to, to give you the same effect. I do like laptop stands to begin with. This one is just the one that I've been using. It is a very premium, well-made piece of material, and I know that I'm gonna have this for a very long time. It isn't extremely portable because of the shape that it is, and it's not malleable and it doesn't fold. So there are some other ones that I'll link down below, but this one by Johan is absolutely amazing if you're into these pure wood material choices and accessories like I am. And now the rest of these products are gonna be auxiliary products that you use with your MacBook. So the first one, I'm gonna use the Satechi X1 Slim. The Satechi X1 Slim has been my tried and true keyboard for a very long time because it gives you the same benefit that you get on the chiclet style side for the magic keyboard directly from apple but i believe it's only 60 dollars versus 120 dollars from apple yes it doesn't have a touch id sensor unfortunately because apple doesn't kind of let third party manufacturers use touch id but outside of that, it's absolutely amazing, and it charges via USB-C as opposed to Lightning on the Magic Keyboard side, and it can connect up to three different devices. So you do have the ability to connect it to your MacBook, your iPad, and your iPhone all at the same time, and then just easily swapping between them on the keyboard itself. And this one is a slim because it does not have the number pad. They do have a number pad variant, but I like to have my keyboards extremely compact because I never use a number pad to begin with. But leave a comment down below if you are team number pad or team anti-number pad when it comes to a keyboard, regardless of which one it is. And then next up for a mouse solution, I use the MX Anywhere S2. I do recommend going with the S3 version. The S2 is just the one that I've had for about four or five years now at this point. And what's amazing is it still works exactly the same that it worked on day one. Battery still holds an amazing charge. The only gripe that I have with the Anywhere S2 specifically is that it does charge via micro USB. And finding those charging cables in my office are not getting harder and harder. But the new version is exactly the same. It just charges via USB-C. So if you do want to pick one up, this is the Logitech Anywhere S2 or S3, depending on which one you want. 
And in my opinion, it is the cheapest high quality mouse you can get for about 60 to $80, depending on when you find it on Amazon. And this one also does connect to up to three different devices. So if you want to connect it to as many as you want, up to three, like I mentioned. And then for storage, I like to go with a Samsung T7 Shield. This is a two terabyte version. I believe they make up to a four terabyte version and they're definitely on sale right now. So definitely check it out if you are able to. But the Shield version versus the regular one, it's just a little bit more rugged. So if you do drop it, you know, you don't have to worry about it maybe getting corrupted or maybe messing up the files physically and things like that. But again, this is just a very fast 10 gigabit speed connection, USB-C SSD that you can work off of. I like to go with the baseline versions of all of my products, whether that is the iPad or the MacBook Air. So with the MacBook Air, I only have 256 gigs of storage. So having this as a secondary way to store footage and store files is amazing to have. And two terabytes, I've had this one for almost a year and I've only filled up, I believe, 500 gigs. So I still have plenty of room in this. And I do work off of this SSD because it is a fast SSD. So whenever I'm using my iPad, for instance, and I'm editing video, I work off of this SSD with no problem whatsoever. And the next thing I wanna bring up is a dongle because yes, I am using the M2 MacBook Air. So technically I only have two Thunderbolt ports versus on the MacBook Pro side, you do get the HDMI port and the SD card reader and things like that. But with this one, I like to have this one at all times because it is the most robust dongle that I do have. And this is by a company called Dockcase. This is their 10 in one Explorer edition. And this has a couple tricks up its sleeve. So as you see in the product name, this is a 10 in one. So you do have a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port. You have a regular USB-A kind of slower speed port. You have a SD card, a micro SD card reader. You have another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port. Then on the other side, you have an HDMI port 2.0 speeds, I believe it is, a display port. You also have another USB-A port. You have another ethernet port which supports up to 10 gigabit of ethernet speeds. And then lastly, you do have your 100 watt PD port for power pass through. So that is your 10 actual ports in one. And what I love about this is actually threefold. So first off, you have all the ports that I would ever personally need. Then secondly is the aesthetic purposes because you have this nice kind of see-through material or see-through glass that you're able to see and see exactly what the circuit board looks like and how it's built internally. And then lastly, it has a one inch by one inch LCD display that gives you diagnostics in in real time of what you're connected to. So for instance, if I do have my SSD plugged in here and I'm transferring files, it will let me know not only the size of the SSD, but then also how fast those files are being transferred in real time. If I'm connected to an external monitor, it'll let me know the FPS of the monitor, if it's 4K versus regular 1080p. And again, this is a diagnostic screen. So anything that you plug into it, it'll recognize, it'll know that it's plugged in, and then it'll give you real time data of that corresponding port, whether it is a micro SD slot, the HDMI port, the display port, or the ethernet port. So that is my dock case and I absolutely love this 10 in one. And they do offer, I believe an eight in one and even a six in one with that same display at a cheaper price if you don't need all the ports that I need and I'll link those all below. And then lastly, I do have a charger by Nomad. This is their 65 watt charger. It's extremely compact. It has two USB-C ports. So I'm able to charge my MacBook and my iPad at the same time or my MacBook and my iPhone at the same time since I now have a USB-C iPhone. Thank goodness. But again, this is just a 65 watt charger. Nothing too crazy about it. It's just very reliable. It's well built. It doesn't get warm to the touch. And at 65 watts, that's more than enough to charge your MacBook Air. Now, if you had a MacBook Pro, maybe I'd beef it up to the 100 watt brick or something like that. But for the smaller iPad, that only maxes out at 33 watts. And then the MacBook Air, which I believe maxes out at 60 watts. And then you also have the wired PD connection for the iPhone. So 65 watts for my current Apple ecosystem is more than enough. And two ports with two cables to charge multiple devices has been amazing. But those are my seven accessories. It's very simple, very no frills, very productivity focused, very utilitarian focused because I don't like to have a lot of stuff out there. The only aesthetic one that I have is the Helm by Andar because I just like the way that it looks and how it matches with my iPhone case and my MagSafe wallet. I have the stone gray variant for all of those and I just love the smell of leather and you know, Apple not doing leather products anymore is a big miss in my opinion. But there are companies like Andar that'll take over. But like I mentioned, everything will be linked down below. Definitely check it out. And like I mentioned also, leave a comment down below of an accessory that maybe I should try out, something that you can't live without that you know is in your ecosystem and in your day to day. And maybe I'll check it out in a future video. But that's gonna do for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch some more videos like this one, check one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.